So for December 13th, 2020, I want to talk about Iran and I want to talk about this character, Rohala Zam. And this is from CNN. Iran executes dissident journalist. You know, right there, Iran's uh, CNN is making it sound like Iran just was picking on this guy just for opposing the Iranian government. And they say he was hanged in Iran on Saturday morning, according to state television. He was found guilty of corruption of earth, a charge that does not specify a crime, but is sometimes used by the Iranian government for alleged attempts to overthrow it. See, they use the word alleged as if there wasn't a trial and he wasn't completely found guilty of trying to overthrow the Iranian government. And as we go through this, you're going to see just how dishonest CNN is being here. Zam ran the online opposition news site Ahmad News, which was accused by Iran of inciting violence during deadly protests in 2017 and 2018. Again, accused by Iran. I'm going to show you that not only does the Western media, in, in before he was executed, in, in previous articles, they've admitted that he was doing exactly that. Even Ahmad News admitted that they were inciting violence. So here we go. This is what the Western media does. This is what CNN does. They, they um, rewrite history to suit their political agenda here, which, of course, for the Western media is to undermine and overthrow the Iranian government, which is exactly what Zam was guilty of doing. Um, but you'll see, it, it gets worse because at, at face value, you're like, well, he was doing that, but isn't execution kind of harsh? Um, I'm not a big fan of the death penalty, but that's what Iran does is none of my business. That's their business. And I'm going to put what Zam was doing in context, and I'll let you decide whether this was too harsh or not. Uh, Zam had been living in exile in France, and Iranian intelligence uh, agents were able to get him in France and bring him back to Iran, which was kind of embarrassing for the West because they build these characters up, they promise them protection, and he was living in the West, and he still was not beyond the reach of Iran's security services. So that was a little humiliating. And then I noticed this, and so I, I decided to look it up. They mentioned FARS News Agency, and they were talking about this case with Zam. So I, I did. I went to see what FARS News Agency had to say about this. This is their article. And they talk very specifically about Ahmad News, invited people to use violence, and instructed how to assemble Molotov cocktails. And it goes on. And they said about how Ahmad News was taken down. And they go through how they caught him and everything else. And this is from Iran's point of view. So this is Iran's side of the story. And I'm going to have all these links in the video description below. So if you're really interested in this, I suggest you read these and you just see how the West's point of view and Iran's point of view differ and see what they agree on. But uh, I went one I went one better. I looked at older articles from the Western media. Maybe they mentioned Zam before his his arrest and execution. And because uh, this is what the Western media likes to do. They like to showcase these people and show how effective and disruptive they are. Uh, but then when it's time for them to go on trial, they try to make them look innocent like they did nothing. And so this is the Daily Beast, which is notoriously pro-Western intervention, regime change, and uh, the app powering the uprising in Iran, where some channels pushed for violence. Was Zam one of them? Yes, he was. Telegram blocked the Ahmad News Telegram channel. Uh, and they talk about Zam. He's, he's here, right there. They mention him as part of Ahmad News. And they say right here, right here. Then managers of Ahmad News announced that the person responsible for encouraging violence had been fired. Now, they did this after they were shut down. So this is damage control. And you always have some person you throw under the bus to save everybody else. But this is Ahmad News themselves admitting that, yes, at least one person there was encouraging violence. So that's not journalism and that's not free speech. That is a crime. And this was violence that killed people. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't breaking shop windows and pushing police. People were dying. And <clears throat> let's go down a little further. 
right here. They talk about uh, Zam being on Voice of America v regularly, like not just one interview. He was regularly invited onto this Voice of America program. And Voice of America, as we all know or should know, is f funded and run by the U.S. State Department. It's U.S. government propaganda. Sh sh straight, very straightforward. Even on their own website, they say Voice of America exists to promote the interests of the U.S. And in Iran, the interests of the U.S. is to undermine and overthrow the Iranian government, to basically do to Iran what the U.S. did to Iraq and Afghanistan. And that's that's kind of where I'm going with this. I'm gonna put this in context, what, Z what Zam did and the context in which he did it. But before I do that, and I hate to keep doing this, but this is the Brookings Institution, which is a think tank based in the U.S. It's funded by the largest corporate financier interests in the U.S., but also on Earth. These are banks. These are weapons manufacturers, oil companies, big pharma, big big ag. And what they do is they fund these think tanks to create America's foreign and domestic policy. Teams of lawyers then turn it into bills that get handed out to the Senate, who are heavily influenced by lobbying, and generally sign off on them without even reading them. And if you don't believe me, go on YouTube and and search senators admit not reading bill before signing. It's it's there, it's there. So, so does this say anything about this sort of this aspect of U.S. is is what Zam doing part of U.S. regime change? Is it part of what the U.S. had already did in Iraq and Afghanistan, which are on both sides along the borders of both sides of Iran, east and west? Yes, it's right here. It's under chapter six. It's under chapter six, supporting a pop popular uprising. The United States could play multiple roles in facilitating a revolution by funding and helping organize domestic rivals of the regime. The United States could create an alternative leadership to seize power. They need internet access, funds to duplicate materials, and funds to keep vigilantes from beating them up. Beyond this, U.S.-backed media outlets could highlight regime shortcomings and make otherwise obscure critics more prominent. And that's what they do everywhere. That's what they do here. If, 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 if it's truly a popular uprising, these people would be popular on their own. They wouldn't need the U.S.'s help. So the U.S. Use, does basically a PR campaign to build popularity for them. And, and short of that, they will manufacture the illusion of popularity, which is exactly what they're doing here in Thailand, by the way. The United States already supports Persian language satellite television, Voice of America Persian, and radio, Radio Farda. That brings, you know, unfiltered news to Iranians, and they've taken the lion's share of overt U.S. funding for promoting democracy in Iran. They have to use the word overt because, of course, there's covert funding that they don't mention here. And this is the this is the this is the sentence that brings it all together. U.S. economic pressure and perhaps military pressure as well can discredit the regime, making the population hungry for uh, rival leadership. And what they're admitting is that what Zam is doing in the media to, to attack and undermine the government and to also promote violence in the streets is one component of several that the U.S. is pursuing at one time to achieve regime change in Iran. They're using economic pressure, military pressure, and this covert, uh, you know, color revolution, basically. And they all work together. They, they're, it's, you can't just do one on its own. You have to do all three. And there's synergies that are created. And this is how you, you get the momentum that, that does overthrow governments, like in Libya, for example. So, so it's right there, and we can see the sanctions. I, 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 you know, I've mentioned about sanctions before. They are hurting the Iranian people. There are people who are suffering and dying in Iran because Iran cannot get the things that they need because of the, the sanctions, the blockades, the embargoes, their ships being seized, coming and going. And uh, we've seen the military pressure. We've watched the U.S., and, and its allies target and kill high-profile figures in the Iranian government and military. General Soleimani, this was January this year, killed in Baghdad airstrike. There was the assassinated Iranian 
nuclear scientist just last month. And at the end of last month, early this month, an Iranian com commander killed an airstrike at Iraq Syria border, which I covered previously. So this is real. This is these things are real. And this is the context Zam was doing his little part to play. And let's one let's just keep going. Let's look. This is Iran here in the middle. And and what's all this around here? U.S. forces in the Middle East and Afghanistan. So we all know the U.S. invaded Iraq, destroyed the country, killed hundreds of thousands of people, invaded and destroyed I Afghanistan, and they have not left either of these countries for now nearly two decades. And you have thousands of troops in other countries all across the Middle East. And look down here at Pakistan, this area right here is called Balochistan, and the U.S. is involved in arming, funding militants, uh, separatists, not only to put pressure on the Pakistani government constantly, but there's um, Chinese infrastructure projects, part of the One, One Belt, One Road initiative that are under pressure and being attacked by those U.S.-backed militants, and they're right on the border with Iran, so it's like a three-for-one deal that the U.S. is running there. And so that means virtually every every border that Iran has has some sort of threat brewing on it and literally thousands of U.S. troops on their borders. So this is this was the context that Zam was doing his little part. This is why when he was finally caught, this is why Iran felt he deserved to be executed. And so you could agree or disagree. And by the way, Pakistan, National Endowment for Democracy, Balochistan, you know, if you look at the details of these programs, you're going to notice a lot of the language the U.S. likes to use when they're promoting ethnically driven separatism, just like what they're doing in Xianchang with the, the Uyghur separatists. And of course, I've, I've written about this extensively, and I'll put all these links in the video description below for you to take a look at. So when we go back, when we look at all that context, and then we look at this again, we can see how dishonest CNN is being. And it's not just CNN, it's everyone in the Western media pretending like this guy was just a, an honest journalist standing up to the Iranian government, when in reality he was working with the U.S. government, who has committed the worst crimes against humanity right on Iran's borders and is fully, openly declaring its intent to do the exact same thing to Iran itself. And he played a role in trying to make that happen. So it's very hard to feel sorry for Zam. I'm not a proponent of the death penalty, but um, I'm not I'm not one to judge how Iran deals with people like this, and they definitely needed to deal with him in some way. So that's the review for today. If you're a patron and you're you know helping me make these videos, thank you very much. I, I greatly appreciate that. Um, if you're watching this when I post it publicly, please, if you thought it was useful, like and share it. Think about subscribing to my channel on YouTube. It's totally free to do, and it helps the channel grow, and I appreciate that as well. And for everyone that's been supporting me in every way, thank you so much. And as always, thank you for watching.